Greetings, traveler. I know it may be tempting not to heed warnings telling you to turn back now, but this one you might want to pay attention to if you're sensitive towards sexual content or foul language in a podcast. We will be swearing during this episode, and we will be talking about some not-so-PG-13 things. So this is your one and only chance to turn back now. Please enjoy the show. But yeah, like, I remember when I was little, all the, like, we had, dang, chowder is gone. And it's been gone for a while. So is Flapjack. Yeah. Adventure Time's been done for a bit. Actually, no, Adventure Adventure Time is back. It's back. Late. They have like they, they have like really the, long ep- epilogue I, episodes. I thought it was back oh, yeah. and then done again. I thought the epilogues were done now. Oh, I don't know. The last one might have come out. It was like a limited run, but the hour, the yeah. um, episodes were like an hour to an hour and a half long. Yeah, they what did about- an epilogue series, and I thought the epilogue series was done like last month, maybe. Mm, it might have been. But what about even older shows? Like when I think of what I watched in two thousand five, SpongeBob. So, Spongebob, Barbie Tom movies. and Jerry Bar- <laughs> Tom and Jer- I watched a lot of Tom and Jerry yeah. I also hold on, watched a lot on. of to- Tom and Jerry Wait, Jordan, you watched like Australian shows or something? That's what I, I meant. <laughs> do you know how to barbecue now? Have you learned? I you I am an excellent cook. So yes. Oh, what was that one? You barbecue for me? <laughs> little Einsteins? I am a but, vegetarian. Oh, I love little Einsteins. The only little Einsteins <laughs> episode I can remember is the one where they're in Australia with the kangaroo and they're trying to go to the Sydney Opera House because there's oh. a talent show going on there and the kangaroos in the talent show. I'll admit, I never watched Little Einstein. I love Little Einstein. The one that's burned into my brain is the one where they did like the planet suite, I think it was. And they like they had to return one of Saturn's missing rings. It was very cute. Oh, and then there was the what was that one? Wonder Pets. Wonder Pets. Wonder, Wonder Pets, Pets, Pets was fucking away. annoying. <laughs> I loved Wonder Pets. I, I loved Wonder it. Pets. The animation was questionable, but it was beautiful. Yeah. The <laughs> friendship that that hamster, duck, and turtle shared. <gasps> oh. <laughs> I feel like he might like Wonder Pets a little too much. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> to help the blank, 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 blank and save the day. Okay. Well, uh, let's go ahead and get the intro rolling here. So, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Nat One Podcast, a.k.a. Nope, because nope, you're not going to want to hear what we're about to have to say. I'm Pertusit. I'm Levi. I'm Jordan. Children's shows. Children's shows. That's the topic for today. (laughs) Yeah. We're all getting old now. Yeah. Chris 22. (laughs) Hey, that means that there are people out there that are old enough to understand what we're saying, but still also have not seen what we're talking about. Which is unfortunate because I think that our childhood television time period was the best. Like kids, kids television is shit now. I like to, I always like to be the devil's advocate and be like, oh, maybe that's just our nostalgia talking, but I, I got Poke it. melon is a we thing. Were, we were based. They are <laughs> cringe. <laughs> we had, I know we mentioned this like right at the very beginning, but we had Chowder, we had Flapjack, we had Adventure Time. Is the Amazing World of Gumball still running or is it done? It might be done. It went for a while though. It's either done or finishing. Because mm-hmm. I, I liked Amazing World of Gumball. I did too. I, I did thought, I have well. clever. I, I, I wasn't sure if that was one that people were like, no, I hated it. <laughs> no, I think everyone I, I didn't, likes it. Yeah, I think everyone liked Gumball. Um, well, I think it was like, it was the same time block as like you had Gumball, Adventure Time, and Steven Universe kind of in that same chunk no. of television. And I, I never uh, watched, like the after Adventure Time hit the midsection of its seasons, I was never caught up with it. So I would tune into random episodes and like st- like actual plot stuff was happening. <laughs> and I would be like, there's a story now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, I, that, that's a lie. I did know there, there was a story, but like they didn't used to do like back to back plot episodes. They would do like funny one off plot episode. And then then they would do like a serious plot episode <laughs> and then they would do funny one. off. And then like towards that last part, it was just like, yeah, Lord. they're at war. They're at war and the candy people are killing each other. And also giant eldritch gods are here. 
and magical science crown and yeah okay so i gotta know without looking it up because on this show we believe in ignorant no no <laughs> we do not promote <laughs> misinformation no but to save all the listeners from my very clickety clackety keyboard without looking it up who was the first person that was like yeah let's put music in kids shows in kids programming what was the first oh, show to do that goodness i don't know i'm gonna go safe guess sesame street Sesame Street? Just because Sesame Street has been around the longest. I was so I have a Bozo. feeling. <laughs> <laughs> That's a safe one. I don't know who started doing it, but it was kind of, it kind of changed the game, huh? <laughs> like in our intro, we were singing songs that we heard as young, young children that yeah. have stuck with us. Like, the Dora, I still know. <laughs> I can get down with the Dora theme song. <laughs> go, dear, go, go. Backpack, well, that's, backpack. my uh taryn taryn and i like to do those you, you can find them on youtube they're like the guess the theme song challenge like guess which show yeah. the theme song goes to and it'll like unlock hidden memories in our brains where it's like We've oh my god i have before. not heard. yeah we have like i haven't heard this in 12 years but i know all of the words <laughs> mm-hmm. that was, exactly. we were doing that with anime openings and taryn knew the mom anime <laughs> he knew the mom anime and that <laughs> Back. Yeah, that's where this the back? joke came from of Taryn watched the mom anime. The, and uh, I got Yuri on Ice consistently, the only yeah. one I got. <laughs> so let me let me find the name so I can give the audio listeners love you to death the name so they're not just thinking it's the mom anime. The it English the title, anime. I believe the English title is Do You Love Your Mom and Her Multi Hit Something Combo? I just want to say, I just want to say, I searched the mom anime and it's the first link on Wikipedia. <laughs> Aaron. I bet he's the main contributor. <laughs> Do you love her, your mom, and her two hit multi target attacks? Also, simply referred to as Okasan Online. <laughs> or the <laughs> mom anime. I love Okasan Online. I know a little bit. About the name. Translation for those at home, if you need it. That literally means mom online translated. <laughs> uh, but yeah, children shows. That one's a, that one's a, you should show your kids that show. True. No, you should not. They will love their mom and her two-hit multi-target attack. Yeah! It's an excellent show about the bonding between mother and child I'm in sorry. another world. I I've never seen it, it, but I guarantee it's not. <laughs> it's degeneracy. But it's kind of funny if you have cringe cop tolerance. <laughs> it's just like Curb Your Enthusiasm. Just, yeah, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> okay, but yeah, there's like some forbidden memories. Like with the Dora, everyone knows the map song, right? Mm-hmm. Or when is the backpack song? I'm the map. Yes. I'm the map. I'm the map. Okay. What are some other songs that have stuck with you, even though you have not watched an episode of that show for us for probably like 10 or 15 years? Chowder Ooh. intro. Ch- uh, <laughs> you the bear. Them off. The bear in the big blue house theme and the like brush your teeth song from bear in the big blue house. <laughs> yeah. Did it make you brush your teeth? It did. Well, that uh, my, my parents and I were talking about it because we actually, we read <laughs> Over the summer, we just rewatched that episode because, and that was like one of the first major like scheduled releases on the kids Disney channel. Uh, <laughs> and so it was like a big event because the, the episode released and it was like a special, it was a special mm-hmm. extra long episode. And that song came out and I was like, I literally have not heard this since the age of six, but I was singing along to it. It was very, very strange. <laughs> Man. What about you, Levi? Well, you said Chowder. <laughs> chowder, uh, chowder Island song from Adventure Time. That's the yeah. come along with me, um, all the butterflies and bees. <laughs> there is a song in my mind that is blocked off a little bit, but the only part I know is the Backyardigans, We're Your Friends, The Backyardigans. <laughs> I swear there's a little bit more to that. That's all I remember, though. Maybe I'm, I'm wrong. I'm trying Maybe to I'm think. Thinking. It's what could, well, that's like the entire song because I think that's all the lyrics, wasn't it? It's just like, we are backyard friends, the backyard. Yeah. Like that whole thing. I think of that all the time. It's in my mind at least three times a day. See, I have a horrible memory associated with the Backyardigans. And so every time I think about the Backyardigans, it makes my stomach hurt. Because when, when I was a kid, Taryn and I were obsessed with Backyardigans. And mm. so the, that was when Burger King had the strawberry milkshake. 
and I liked the strawberry milkshake because it was the same color as one of the characters. And I got sick one time and drank a strawberry milkshake and like chugged it and then immediately threw up. So now I have, my brain has that association with Uniqua from the backyard against being associated with pink milkshake coming out of my nose. I have a similar story. Yo ain't a fan of the backyard against if you never done this before. (laughs) This is not a children's show or children's programming. I don't know if I've told you guys this story. When I was like eight, I had a huge Kirby face, right? Little little pink Kirby. Boy, that guy. Uh, Boy, oh. I had a huge Kirby face. I loved, I only had one Kirby game. I just played it like 15 times over and over again as a kid. And somehow in that game, there was either, there was a strawberry shortcake and it was either a superpower like in Mario the Mushroom or the Star, mm-hmm. or it was just worth a lot of points. Like it was a big point item the strawberry shortcake i was like kirby loves the strawberry shortcake so must i <laughs> so i instructed my mom i said wench go to the nearest dollar store and fetch me strawberry shortcake this instant she did but they didn't have just strawberry shortcake sitting around so she got me strawberry shortcake popsicles okay uh-huh. And I wanted to be just like my hero, Kirby. Oh, no. So oh, I no. Sat- oh, no. <laughs> I sat right next to our trash can, and I started eating these things. I hated them. They were disgusting. I hated it. <laughs> and I just shoveled them as much as I could. Those are the ones with the, like, pebbles on the back, on the, like, yes. outside, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I hated them, and I didn't throw up. I have never eaten one ever again since then, though. <laughs> So moral of the story, pink strawberry flavored things should not be consumed by people. Oh, <laughs> Children's man. programming does brainwash you. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh, now it funny. does. Back when we were kids, it didn't, but now it's all subliminal messaging. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. Do you have I mean, a story what? like that, Levi? <laughs> I, uh, hmm. I can't say that I did anything stupid in the name of a children's show no i don't think i did uh partially because i was just like between like all of elementary school up to like probably mid middle school i was a very inactive child i didn't do things i just like had a routine woke up ate breakfast went to school came home stayed at my grandma's until my parents got home from work probably watched tv and funny cartoons there and then went home and i don't even like I don't even know what I did before I had internet access when I was little. I don't remember. <laughs> like, that's how deep ingrained internet is in Gen Z culture. But, mm. yeah, no, I don't think I ever did anything stupid in the name of <laughs> cartoons. I did stupid stuff, <laughs> but not in the name of cartoons. Like, there was the time that I uh, ran through a screen door at my grandma's house full <laughs> speed because we were playing kick the can, and I couldn't see that it was closed. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so I just, like, cartoon ran through it and left a, left an outline of my body <laughs> oh, no. in the screen door. No one was mad. Everyone thought it was funny. It's <laughs> really funny. Although that is kind of that's kind of hilarious considering you're the only one here that does not wear glasses. You didn't see the screen door was closed. Listen, it was intense, okay? My <laughs> uncle, my <laughs> uncle had was looking for us. He was gonna find me. So I had to run. And the closest entrance was the screen door, which I thought was open out of my peripheral vision. It was like two feet to my left. So I really quickly whipped into it and turned and just <laughs> whipped. took off straight towards it and like right as I was like this close to it I was like oh no oh no because <laughs> I could see that it was <laughs> closed but it was too late at that point I had the momentum <laughs> I- conspiracy theory Levi has the worst vision out of the three of us but it's been a secret for this long he can't let it he can't let he it be can't. known <laughs> When the screen goes dark, he puts on his glasses. Uh, <laughs> my brown coloration is actually, that's not brown. That's actually just black. That's the size of my pupils at all times in order to take in as much light as they can. <laughs> we don't know my color. real eye color. <laughs> <laughs> Pablo, why are we dead? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Levi waking up after waking up, quote unquote, after running through the screen door. Why? Why are we dead? That actually reminds me. So obviously, children's show has had some crazy songs that have stuck with us forever. What if there is any? Is there a moment from a childhood show that made you cry? Think about that on a moment. I have a story. It has to go last. I have. I have. I can't. I have one. I have one. Okay. Please. I, please. Okay. Okay, I used to love the movie Elmo and Grouchland when I was a kid, but mm-hmm. I would always get, and this, okay, this is actually relevant because Elmo has become popular on TikTok for some reason. I've seen that. Elmo is huge on TikTok, and so I used to watch Elmo and Grouchland all the fucking time as a kid, mm-hmm. but it always made me so anxious the first like 20 minutes of the movie when it's leading up to Elmo losing his blanket. Cause I'm like, I know it's gonna happen. And it's so traumatic because this child loses his blanket. And also, okay, this is a little bit of a detour. Zoe has been the worst Muppet on Sesame Street for as long <laughs> as anyone can remember. And it's just now getting recognition because Elmo is trending on TikTok. <laughs> Zoe is the worst and Zoe is a bad friend. And Zoe <gasps> is the reason that Did she and go Zoe is the Rocco? reason. Yes! Fucking <laughs> Rocco! No, Zoe is the worst friend and she's the reason that Elmo loses his blanket! <gasps> so yeah, that traumatized me as a kid. As I, w- I would always, I knew it was coming and I would still watch the movie, but I would always get so upset when Elmo lost his blanket. Reasonable. Reasonable. <laughs> We're putting out a hit piece on Zoe. Yes. We're coming for you. We hate <laughs> Zoe. <laughs> okay, Levi? Again, I didn't start like crying at media until I was like in high school I don't know what like I I think like I just I was sapient I knew I existed up until that point but it was like I just didn't have like emotional development until early high school I Mm. think because I just didn't like emotionally react to things until then Levi and did then not it gain was like, sentience until the age of 16. <laughs> and then, evolved. like, you, my fr- both of them know that, like, I'm the biggest crybaby there is when it comes to media now. Like, I cry at a ton of stuff because I'm always like, oh, the poetic value in <laughs> this in this movie is just so, like, I cry at Lord of the Rings stuff because of the, like, heroism and the defiance of evil and rising above what it means to be like rising above evil even though you know you're gonna die so i cry at that and then i also cry at like violet evergarden which is just straight sad stuff which is like yeah this guy's daughter had cancer and she died and violet evergarden visits him and he sees his dead daughter in her while he's visiting him while she's visiting him and it's just sad and i cry like a baby at all that (laughs) stuff too like i cry my brain probably not fabricates but looks for every reason to cry at media now that I can ever have. And it started at like high school. I never used to do that before, before high school. So I, no, I didn't have anything like that that happened to me when I was younger. No. Okay. Before I tell my story to really stress for the, the audio listeners, love you to death at home and the visual watchers hate you to death. I, uh, mm. <laughs> I wonder which ones will go first. I wonder if love or hate will kill first. We'll see. Don't I, we? That's we a good test. Well, considering that one audience doesn't exist. <laughs> so Silent. hate one. That's why they're <laughs> not there. To really stress how much of a crybaby leave I can be now, I have to tell the <laughs> Demon Slayer story. <laughs> May hey, I leave? Okay. That, you can <laughs> tell it. But okay, I want to say though that every time I cry, I do believe it is justified. Because uh, I think that they're beautiful moments and I can cry at them. So yes, yeah, go cry. ahead. You can, I, you, can, you can explain from your point of view and then I'll explain from my point of view okay. if there's anything I want to contest. Okay. I might not want to contest anything. So I'm not going to put out a hit piece on crying. Except I am. <laughs> no, no. I don't have a problem. But he does <laughs> cry a lot. <laughs> and we all went to watch the Demon Slayer movie together. Most of us. I can't remember exactly who was there. I think it was me, I do, Levi, TJ. I do just okay. want to say beforehand, mm-hmm. when we say I cry a lot, it's only at media. I'm not <laughs> like a wuss in real life. I just cry at media. Yeah. Uh, continue. I cry at everything else. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're watching the newest Demon Slayer movie, which only came out. Actually, it's been almost a year now, hasn't it? Yeah. 
so I'm I'm gonna put spoiler warning, but also it's been a year. So <laughs> yeah, it's been a year, and it's one of the hottest anime there is. So if you haven't watched it, that's your fault. Yeah, it is also the whole arc is also available as just an anime now. So anyway, we're watching the movie together, and I've only watched the I've only watched the movie. I haven't seen the animated arc, the anime part of the same arc, but it's the train arc, and. Early on, there's a lot of silly hijinks, and there's a part in it where the three main characters, Inosuke, Zenitsu, and main character, Tanjiro, are orbiting, literally orbiting around the new character that just showed up who likes them all and is cool and awesome. I'm not talking like walking around him. They get up and float and spin around him. Which, you know, it's silly anime. They're trying to be funny, and they're like trying to exaggerate what it was. But I saw that. And this was like in the first 20 minutes of the movie. And I turned and leaned to the rest of my friends because the theater was almost empty when we watched it. COVID. I think uh, it was empty. I think we were the yeah. only people in there. So I lean over and I say, now remember this scene right here, guys, of them orbiting this main character later on because they're going to try to make us cry. And I just want you to remember this is from that same movie. <laughs> well, at the end, something really sad happens. There's some character death involved. And there's a whole point about uh, a mother's pride and i saw that scene and i was like well, that's kind of sad it's a, it's a you know it's kind of a trope but it was done well and it's kind of sad and then i immediately thought of them orbiting that same character and i was like i started laughing to myself <laughs> and levi <laughs> started to cry <laughs> any contention <laughs> i mean that was that was all truthful. I There wasn't as much criticism as I thought there would be. It no. was more just like telling the factual details. Yeah, uh-huh. I just wanted to stress exactly what happened. <laughs> well, I just want to say, though, that you can have not serious scenes in a movie and serious scenes in a movie and still have it impact you. Impossible. It, it's not like just because there's one joke that the movie can't have emotional impact in it. There's some um, kind of impact. But yeah, I, it was, I was going pretty bad. It was... Like I would, yeah. Uh. <laughs> now I will mention my story. Even though I had the wheel, the baton, I will now mention my story of a childhood show that cried. And I welcome immediate criticism and jump ins because this is going to be something. <laughs> you all may be aware of an old Cartoon Network show called Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not really a show you think of when you think of deep emotional moments. <laughs> I wouldn't know. No. I wasn't allowed to watch it. No, it was very comedy centric, and that was about it. It's like it's pretty much like Looney Tunes, same yeah. type of same type of like comedy as Looney Tunes. Yeah. Well, very classic show though. <laughs> I'm sitting at home watching it. I'm like five or six years old. We have TVs, but as a five or six year old, I don't know if I was just especially stupid or if this is how all five or six year olds are. I really do think that I was like especially stupid as a child mm-hmm. until I was like twelve. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting at home. We and my parents watched their shows like CSI and all these serious shows with serious elements. They watch that in the living room. I go to their room, which has another TV. It's a small, like box TV almost, like one of those old boom, like the tube TV. Mm-hmm. I go in there to watch it by myself. I sit on my parents' bed because I didn't have a TV in my room at the time. Well, I'm watching Cartoon Network and I'm watching Ed and Nettie, and we always keep the volume from like 16 to 20 on the TV out of 100. And I was like, I wonder why. Like I'm a five and six year old. I'm like, I just, I don't know why they give us the full hundred if we don't use it, you know? In my infinite childlike wisdom, I decided I'm going to turn it all the way up to see what happens. Oh no! So I do. (laughs) And it's getting louder and really loud. And you guys know for children, loud noises are even worse than they are as an adult, really. Yeah. So it's hurting my ears and I'm getting, like, I'm getting hurt. I'm getting sad and angry and I'm still increasing the volume. And then I reach, I needed to see what happened. So I get to a hundred and it's so loud. Ed and Eddie is a super loud show too, with a lot of sound effects. And my parents come and they're like, what's going on in here? And I'm like, I tried to turn it to a hundred to see what would happen. And I started turning it down it got stuck. It couldn't go down. <laughs> That's why you don't turn it to a hundred. The volume wouldn't go down. My <laughs> mom had to escort me outside the house where you could still hear the full show while my dad fixed it. 
and I started crying because of a children's show. Not because it was sad, mind you, but because of the pain. <laughs> this is why mine had to go last. Oh my god. <laughs> this beats the milkshake story. <laughs> I did a lot of really dumb stuff as a child. <laughs> Let me not even mention the firecracker or anything or the gasoline. That's another story for another time. What? Uh, I don't know if I had a story where it, I'm sure I did. I'm pretty sure one of the Scooby-Doo movies also made me cry out of sadness. I think it might have been that alien one where the alien girl goes away. Mm. But I feel like that was a much more worthwhile story to share was the Ed and Eddie one. <laughs> Now that begs the uh, question, though. Which cartoon dog is your guys' favorite cartoon dog? Cartoon dog? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot, I know. Uh, what was... Okay, wait, what is the, the name of the wiener dog from Oscar? Oscar. I don't know. It's the <laughs> one with the octopus. The It's it's so cute. It was very, like, calming. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna look that up now. I was also a big that. Blue's Clues kid, so that's, that's um, another one. A whole blue... <laughs> Wiener dog. It's just showing me pictures of wiener dogs. Wiener <laughs> Don't look dog up from Oscar. Uh, wiener dog from Oscar at 3 a.m. challenge. He loves you. Look at the that Oscar, the wiener Oscar Meyer owner. Name is middle name. You start looking. That's the description what? for a wait. Okay, let me go to the, wait, what? This is a YouTube video. Is this the oh am those I, are the did captions? Did I call it the wrong thing? Hold on. I might what? be wrong. I, no, I swear to God, this is. A, did I imagine this television show? Hold Uh-oh. on. Uh oh. <laughs> Oscar the Wiener Dog in an Oscar Meyer Wiener Wagon. No. Oscar the Wiener Dog. What about Rusty, the narcoleptic Wiener Dog? It's Oswald. I'm an idiot. That's what it is. Uh, it's oh. Oscar Oswald. <laughs> That's Oswald the Octopus. Yep, I'm stupid. Um, To be fair, um, it was one season that came um, out in 2001. Yeah. So. (laughs) Ah. Weenie. That's what his name Uh, was. Oswald. Yeah, Weenie. It's like Hubie Halloween. No. (laughs) What about you, Levi? What's your favorite cartoon dog? You can't also say Weenie as much as you may want to. I think it is probably uh, Scoobert Dubert. Uh, Scooby Doo. He, I, Scooby Doo was probably yeah. I watched a lot of Scooby Doo. That was uh, another one of the ones that, because what was the one that was like? There was one that was like uh, the one of the many runnings of the show that was early two thousand Scooby. What's new Scooby Doo? Yes, what's, what's new? Scooby-Doo? I, that's, I was gonna ask if you watched the classic. <laughs> what's new Scooby Doo or Mystery Inc? Yeah, Those were the wa- three iterations during our childhood. I watched a lot of what's new Scooby Doo. I loved Scooby-Doo. me too. He was. See, he's a I great would watch dog. the reruns. I would watch the reruns on Boomerang. Mm-hmm. I liked both. <laughs> mm-hmm. Did, Scoobert, I don't think I actually <laughs> cared for Mystery Inc. that much. That did have that really funny meme line that was like, uh, "Because Fred, you love traps." But that, <laughs> a lot of Mystery a lot Inc. of memes did come out of Mystery Inc. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think I, it was too plot driven to be a Scooby Doo show. Yeah. That was that was the point of it. Was they were trying to you know change it up and be like, yo, a Scooby Doo show with an actual story. It was like a CW show before the CW <laughs> yeah. started doing that shit. Yeah, and then everyone was like, "What? No, we don't want." Well, actually, there oh. were some people that were like, "Yeah," uh, but I think like a good 60% majority were like, what? No, we don't want that. Give me Uh, my anthology. Yeah. (laughs) Well, my favorite cartoon dog. See, there's a lot of good contenders, right? Like you got uh, Goddard from Jimmy Neutron. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I forgot about Goddard. Goddard. He's pretty, he's pretty based. Uh, (laughs) He's pretty poggered if you. (laughs) Get out. (laughs) I like Goddard quite a bit. I liked Blues. I liked Blue from Blue's Clues, but I really didn't watch that much. Mm-hmm. Um, I was a big Blue's Clues kid. I wasn't that big. That was another traumatic event in my childhood was when they changed from Steve to oh, Joe. Like I thought that. you were going to say something about a blue milkshake now. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that was like the big TV event whenever we were kids was the changeover from uh, Steve True. to Joe. True. We were, we were there for that. That was like yeah. our time. Yeah. Yeah. It was our time down here. <laughs> I understood that reference without watching the source material. <laughs> Which is up to you. Both of you need to watch the Goonies, but that's yeah. <laughs> another. I mean, there was Clifford, the big red dog, mm-hmm. diametrically opposing Blue, who is a small blue dog. 
depends on which Clifford series you're watching, because Clifford used to be the tiniest dog before he became That's the true. biggest dog. There's also this one's probably gonna this is gonna be one of those things that opens a vault of memories people didn't know they had if our audience is our same age. Crypto the super dog. Yeah. What? I watched a lot of Crypto the Super. There dog. was like three or four seasons of DC Crypto, Dogs. Oh, the Super, super dog. dog. Crypto up, up and away. I can't say that I watched that one. Oh my god, that's fair. It was pretty great. They even had a bat hound in it. But <laughs> my very favorite, though, despite all the many cartoon dogs we had in our childhood, my very very favorite was Courage the Cowardly Dog. I want to change my answer, but I want to hear about Courage first. I forgot. <laughs> I completely forgot about another. Continue, continue. (laughs) I love Courage from Courage the Cowardly Dog. Not only was he the main character and really cool, but he was not super powerful, unless you count shapeshifting, but only to make signs and not for actual use. (laughs) (laughs) But the show itself, have you guys both actually watched Courage? A little bit, yeah. I watched a ton of Courage, I yeah. Like, artistically, it was way above and beyond what was needed yeah. for a dang kids show. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which is amazing. And also the fact that it was, like, one of the few and only, to this day still, horror kids shows. They're, they aren't really doing that anymore. <laughs> and very well done horror kids. Like, it's, some of those mm-hmm. episodes are still pretty fucking creepy. Oh, yeah, like the Return Barber episode. The slab. Mm-hmm. The slab. That's what I was thinking of, I yeah. love that one. Such a good use of 3D CG. They were, mm-hmm. the people that made Courage were really smart. And I would love, uh, uh, I would love to see Courage come back, like make a new Courage and either make it like Adult Swim Courage or keep it a kid's show and just let them, you know, push the envelope a little more. <laughs> mm-hmm. I would be worried they would mess up the animation though. Cause like all of the reboots that you keep saying, they, they don't have the same animation style and that kind of mm-hmm. takes away the charm of the original show. Yeah, if they're going to bring it back, I want it to be either by the people that made Courage originally or with the blessing of them. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? But I really like Courage as a character and as a show. It's got to be definitely top kids show that features a single color dog. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Jordan, you had a new dog? I do. I have a new answer and I can't believe that I forgot about this because this is my favorite mm-hmm. show as a kid. Fetch with Ruff Ruffman. Ruff Ruffman is my favorite cartoon dog, flat out. Game show dog, period. I don't know if either of you watched that show, but I nope. was obsessed with that show. Oh my god, it was on oh, PBS okay. Kids and it was the it was a child game show. It was it was like a reality right. show and it was hosted by Ruff Ruffman, who is a cartoon dog. Uh, <laughs> oh, I've seen, yeah. And I've so he would Ruff I wanted to be on that show so bad. <laughs> no, but like I, I desperately wanted to be on that show. And it was just it was so good. And it was also like still educational content for kids mm-hmm. because they would go and they would learn like about science things and history things and do all this stuff. But it was still a game show. So it was it was really funny. And the actual character of Ruff Ruffman was also funny. And the theme song slaps. I don't have to listen to that. We might have to do a whole video on that where we rate children's show theme songs yes without playing them because of probably copyright that would be that would be very funny just like five seconds of silence yeah i like that one that was one of my favorites yeah (laughs) wait for wait for the beat drop utter silence yeah (laughs) i don't even know what children's show we would be rating that says where we say wait for the beat drop Talking about children's show dogs, we're we're like we're we're kind of like a D and D podcast, kind of. No matter what we talk about, we end up talking about D and D. So I would True. think that qualifies yeah. us as a D and D podcast. What about what's your favorite D and D dog? I'm gonna say that really gross one that I made using minor illusion, not realizing that I couldn't move it unless I used my action. So when I tried to move it, not using my action, it ended up kind of looking like soup. When did this happen? It didn't, but it will. What? <laughs> People don't understand how Minor Illusion works. And if you tried to make a dog out of Minor Illusion, it would look like something from the Chalk Zone came to life. I felt like that entire thing was a thinly veiled threat for something. I don't know what. You at home listening now, you know. Looks like chalk. Soup dog. (laughs) Soup dog. uh, Crypto. The soup soup dog. (laughs) No, I was going to ask. Let's put all the cartoon dogs in a battle royale, who wins? Courage. Courage? Blue. Blue. Courage wins. Mm-hmm. What about Clifford? He's big and red. Uh, that but gives him is... disadvantage to dexterity checks already. That's I'm, I'm putting that out there. <laughs> no, Clifford's too kind. He would oh, he would think of the best in his enemies and give them the benefit of the doubt. 
<gasps> I didn't even think about the kindness factor. I just assumed they'd all go in with the killer's instinct. But you're right. All Whereas, the childhood show dogs wouldn't do that. Except courage. Because if you just, <laughs> courage, if you courage just told Courage, <laughs> if you told Courage that Muriel's life was on the line, if he didn't win, Muriel gets killed, he would kill everyone. He wouldn't be happy. <laughs> he wouldn't be happy doing it, but he would kill everyone to protect Muriel. Like, he would do it, and you would see the devastation wrought from courage before him. He would turn back towards the camera, and he'd say, the things I do for love, yeah. <laughs> like he said in the show all the time. I don't know. I'm still holding out for Blue. I think Blue could win against Blue. courage. How? Explain. Because Blue has innate plane-shifting abilities. Huh? That doesn't that is a from courage. Thing. Yeah, well, if you're not on the same plane of fucking existence... <laughs> I, I didn't can, do anything to existence, but anyway. All you're, all you're saying to me is that Blue can prolong their death. <laughs> Courage no. will be waiting for when they return, and he will be there, and he will kill them for love. No. I, no, I'm saying that Blue would be able to get away, and she would be able to stay Or <laughs> Courage will just go and find one of those like mad scientist guys that exist in his world and make them make a machine that would send him to the plane that Blue's on. In oh, order to kill those. Blue, because he would do it for love, the things he does for love. <laughs> now, I think Blue has the shot, but only if she follows her clues. Yes. Like, does Blue have assistance from whoever her, her friend is at the time, her owner? I'm going to say it depends, because I didn't like Joe, but I do like Steve. I think Steve we would be an was, ally and an asset. it was all just the dogs, though. It is we just said the it was, dogs. It's just the dogs in the Battle Royale. To Unless fair, we're counting it as like Battle Royale rules where they all get item. Then Steve could Steve be an, is an item. item. <laughs> Steve is a familiar. But Steve's then what does everyone else get? Uh, I, know, I would say that she doesn't oh. have her human because like the she's always the one that's leading around the humans in the show. That's true. It's Blue's clues that Blue make. Yo, I figured it out. Courage gets beat by Blue, but not by Blue. Blue leads clues for some other dog like Crypto or Clifford that makes them kill Courage. <laughs> Accidentally how, just steps on Courage. Like probably a Rube Goldberg machine, I would guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But Courage always comes out on top. That's true. These Not are this also, time. They're cartoon dogs, so like it would be that thing from like Looney Tunes where they would get squished and they'd be like, ow, and then get back up. <laughs> they peel <laughs> off the bottom of the anvil and just yeah. pop back out. <laughs> oh, that's why I hold that one of the strongest powers in like fictional knowledge is the tune force, the ability to be mm -hmm. act like a cartoon. You can't lose. You can't lose. Yeah. Well, okay, so so Clifford has never exhibited the tune force, has he? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. Which He's means he based. is killable. He is uh, killable. But I think Clifford that I think that Pat Blue would apply Blue? to the Tune Force. Why? Because I don't think Blue's ever exhibited the Tune Force. She jumps into paintings. That's Mario not getting 64. hurt. That's not that's Tune Force's survivability. So courage, <laughs> courage has exhibited Tune Force on many occasions. I wouldn't say Hold survivability. On. I would say the bending of physics is Tune wait, wait. Force. Okay. Before we get too into the Toon Force, we'll save that for another episode. We can we, we can have a whole battle royale of Toon Forcers. Hell yeah. Um, let's go back to the items idea, because I think that's a very funny and good one. Mm -hmm. If we give Blue the item, which is, I'm thinking of like a Super Smash Bros. trophy where she summons Steve for some time. <laughs> I think that Courage should only rightly have Eustace's mallet. <laughs> I, I can concede that. See, Courage would, no, Courage would be like Hero in Smash, where he has a massive selection <laughs> and you have to input like the 47 button, not 47 button. He has a button that you press that gives you a random pick out of all of his things. And it can either be really stupid and not good, or it can be like explosion, which just kills everything on the stage in one second. There you go. What's one? There's like courage could summon the computer friend that gives him advice and tells him what to do. Yeah. Or it could also summon like the flying alien saucer that... <laughs> the chickens bring that he could use yeah. to just kill people uh okay what would clifford bring like a friendship bracelet i don't know he would bring his uh what are those he has small for dog friends right well he also yeah. has the he also he has a girl that takes care of him and i can't remember True. who it is i can't remember her name but i, don't I can't know remember who's bring her yeah <laughs> not to the dog fights <laughs> <laughs> No, he does have smaller dog friends, and I'm trying to remember what their names are. And then uh, Scooby-Doo. We forgot about Scoobert. It would have to be Shaggy. Shaggy would have to be yeah. an item. Absolutely. 
Yeah, Shaggy would be his trophy that he brings. His trophy <laughs> character is back up. Can we also See, have Scrappy as an item? <laughs> uh, Scrappy, no. unfortunately, has to be in the fight, but I think we can concede that every dog on the field immediately recognizes it as a threat and kills it. Yes. Notice Scrappy's I refer to Scrappy as it. Yeah. <laughs> Who else is who else is in on this? So uh, we got other uh, we, we got, got crypto. crypto. Yeah, he's That's a super uh, dog. Or he's super a super dog. dog. But I think that courage would have kryptonite. Again, I'm really like I really don't <laughs> think there's any dogs that can beat courage. He is just courage Goddard. like cowardly dog. Goddard. He has Goddard. Goddard. I don't think Goddard could beat courage. I don't think he really? could. He has like doesn't he have laser eyes? Yes. Well, I mean, Crypto also has laser eyes, and I don't think Crypto could be Courage. <laughs> but Crypto has a weakness. Goddard is a robot. That mm. makes him even more weak than Crypto. Oh, impossible. <laughs> Robots that, are perfect. He can right? kill. He can kill Goddard with Eustace's mallet. I, no. I don't know. Have you ever dropped a Samsung? Those things don't break. Like, <laughs> no way. You didn't know. Goddard's <laughs> Apple brand. God damn it. We no. will never be sponsored by Apple. No. I just ensured we will never be sponsored by Apple. We're so sorry. Uh, okay. unless, unless Apple wants to be hip and self-aware. That's, uh, and yeah, that's dope true. and cool. And I'm out of adjectives and words. It's like the thing in movies where Apple doesn't let uh, villains use their products. Apple will never let us mention that we use their products because we're now the villains. <laughs> you all using your pair computer and pair phone? God. Right you. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm up in the pair. Wait. I just realized that implies that all of the kids in Victorious are the villains of the story. Well, you didn't know what they did after school. And iCarly. They all yeah. had pair phones. <laughs> okay. Okay. So if Courage absolutely wins the Battle Royale, now take all the cartoon dogs, all the childhood dogs, put them on a racetrack. Who wins the race? Mm-hmm. Oh. Hmm. Cl- Clifford has an unfair advantage. Yeah, I would say Cl- Clifford would be the would be the one I would immediately go to because just long strides, right? But yeah. maybe there's one. We now, should think about this. We're all Scooby assuming- Doo. No, Scooby Doo would fucking win. That's true, especially if well, you, you have, have him something some- chasing him. <laughs> you as give long him as something he's chasing. afraid of, he's gone. Yeah, he oh, is oh, out oh, of oh, there. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, he. Yeah, that's the thing. All the dogs will take off, and everyone will think that Scooby Doo is gonna lose, but he's just revving up. At the starting line, he's doing that thing, and he shoots. Yeah, he goes. <laughs> Breaks the sound barrier. <laughs> I could see that. See, I, I would agree with that. We're assuming fair play, that none of the dogs cheat or anything. Let's keep it that way. I definitely don't think Courage has that, because he's never been super no. fast. No, Courage has always been slow. If he was <laughs> super fast, then all the problems he had in the show probably wouldn't happen as much. <laughs> Uh, my first guess was going to be Crypto or Goddard because Goddard's got his stretchy legs where he just... And he can fly. Yeah, and then Crypto also just flies really fast like Superman. I think right. Scooby-Doo would just be so fast. I'm going to go with the tune physics for Scooby-Doo on this one too. Yeah, he's got the law of tune physics. <laughs> when you that first said... Him. When you said Scoob would win because... like When you said Scoob was going to win, I at first thought you were going to be like, oh, because he has the mystery ink mobile. The mystery machine. <laughs> he can't drive. Hey, he could figure it out. Probably That's can drive better dog. than I can. He probably would drive better than I could. <laughs> Let's not forget. We're forgetting a cartoon dog. One iconic to the history of cartoon dogs. We hmm. are. The Johnny Test's sidekick dog. Oh my God, Dookie. Oh, Dookie, yeah. yeah. Dookie is like a, but Dookie's like a like a college hippie, not hippie. <laughs> hipster that's pretty much like what doogie's entire personality like he walks around and drinks coffee that's his thing yeah he could totally win in a fight and a race no <laughs> no i feel like he would be invited to the race and then just not show up or like he would be invited in and yeah he <laughs> yeah. not realized that he was invited to partake but he thought he was invited <laughs> to watch yeah or judge he's there to hey, judge <laughs> judge the race <laughs> 10 out of 10 well i, I came in first <laughs> God, that awakened horrible memories for me. Didn't uh, like Johnny Test, not much. I watched it a lot, but I got to admit, watching it made me feel like a bad person. It was watching, infuriating at times. It was very, like, stupid kid yeah. humor. It was a bit much for me. Except Bling Bling, he could do no wrong. Be honest, you know it to be true. It did have a great theme song. The cartoon was a great, a, but... It, well, it was the, the theme song was also kind of a direct ripoff of American Idiot, though. From- yeah, it was. <laughs> 
They got the pop punk market down. <laughs> it's amazing what you can do when you just steal things. No. <laughs> the message for everyone to take home from this episode, it's amazing the things you can do when you just steal. No. Mm-hmm. That one is not liable for any crimes that you will commit. We will not testify in court. Yeah, this is not financial advice, I think is the thing we have to say. <laughs> uh, but it totally isn't. You thought I was going to say is. I subverted your expectations. Now laugh. It's not financial advice from Nat One. <laughs> it is, however, from criminals. Pro- Nat One is not liable for the financial <laughs> advice given by <laughs> Levi in this podcast. <laughs> I'm talking independently from Nat One. No, it's of course it's not fucking advice to <laughs> don't don't be a bad person, stupid. I see you. I see you who has been walking out of the house while we've been saying this, preparing to go commit a crime. <gasps> I see you. Never. But you know, it isn't a crime. Purchasing our deluxe 18 plus NFTs. This is financial advice. Those don't exist yet. They don't exist yet. I'm not drawing them. <laughs> we can hire someone else. I can do it. You. Although, to be fair, my mom did find silly bands for us. <laughs> <laughs> We're the balls rolling, boys. <laughs> We're on the fast track. All right. I feel like this is a pleasant discussion about pet uh, show cat. A children's shows and <laughs> their pets. <laughs> oh my god. Me when I drink the strawberry milkshake. <laughs> Me when I... <laughs> Me when hamster acrobatics. Look that up on YouTube for anyone who doesn't know what that is. Look up hamster funny. acrobatics on YouTube. <laughs> uh, do you guys have any closing remarks regarding childhood shows? We'll probably return to this because I don't feel like we... We barely scratched the surface. Yeah, we, no, like, we've, we've got all kinds of stuff that we could. Yeah, we I mean, still talk. How, how, mu- how much time are we looking at? What are we running on? It's close to an hour. I Probably never 50. set timers. I keep forgetting to set timers for this. <laughs> I mean, because I was going to say maybe just a closer. We could be. Did we say like our straight up just favorite childhood show? Did we do that? No, I don't think. Yeah, just for a closer, we could just like mention that and then we could do the little fade out while whatever we're talking about, we're talking about after that. Okay. You're not supposed to acknowledge the fade out. I can, <laughs> they're the fourth wall. Our show has an excellent fade. Check it out. Because that's a haircut because they can refer to that in, in haircutting industry. As it, yeah. Yeah, we get, the, we get the joke. We get it anyway. because we saw you, you didn't laugh. The, we <laughs> saw you do the physical thing to your head, but the audio listeners might not not have actually gotten it because they didn't see you do the thing with your hair i was counting so, on the video watchers to get it yeah there's uh, the, i mm, mm. there will be eventually <laughs> yeah, one okay, day you can edit it now <laughs> you, <laughs> don't you see them in the black space behind me right there don't you me see too. your eyes the watchers the darkness? what <laughs> are you the watchers with a thousand eyes <laughs> but yeah favorite children's show of all time what's your favorite Jordan? Between the Lions. Between the Lions. I don't... Between, it's, okay, it's a, it's, a, it's a tie between Between the Lions and the original Electric Company. Oh, yeah. I don't know what either of those things are. Okay, I know be- the second one. Between the Lions was PBS Kids. and we. I, I know what it, like... Between the Lions is. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was the you, one with All the you had to say what it was, yeah. All you had to say what it was, it was PBS Kids. That's all it I needed puppet, and I remembered. It's and it still stands up. Like I, I, I will still watch it occasionally. Like if I'm really I sad, just, I will watch it occasionally. I and just then, didn't watch too much PBS Kids, so I had to search. I watched so much PBS Kids, and then Electric Company, the original one. I I knew about the Electric Company because my parents bought it on DVD, so we watched it on DVD. And it was that and the Animaniacs that we had, and Tara and I would watch interchangeably off and on. And um, the Electric Company was an educational show. It was like very early educational television, kind of the same time that Sesame Street came out. And it had great music. Rita Moreno and Morgan Freeman were both on it. It also had appearances by Spider-Man. And there were a couple other things. It was it was a really good show. It was kind of like the kid version of SNL, honestly. Let me take a look. Let me see if I, the Electric Company. I've it was also this. it was remade on PBS later. I think it was around like 2007, and it was remade. And Lin Manuel Miranda was on it, and so was uh-huh. um, I think his name is William Jackson Harper, the guy that plays Cheaty on The Good Place, was also on it. Oh yeah, the reboot was actually also pretty good, but it was very short lived. Weird cat. Yeah. Oh my God, Yo Gabba Gabba exists. <laughs> 
Okay, I will say what my favorite show is, but we do got to talk about Yo Gabba Gabba. I don't Yo know Ga- about you guys. Yo Gabba Gabba is part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. What? You're right. <laughs> and I'm upset. But when I was a kid and Yo Gabba Gabba first started airing, that was the first show when I was a kid that I saw and I was like, this is bad. This is a bad show <laughs> that is made for little baby kids and it's bad. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure some people loved it. People listening to this are like, that's my favorite show. I've already upset the Parks and Rec community, so now I have the Yo Gabba Gab heads coming after me. The Gabites. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know why, but when I was a kid, I watched like when the trailers, like the adver- advertisements were coming out and people were like, like it was like, oh, new show. It's coming out soon. New show. And I was like, okay, okay. And then the more the trailers were coming out and, and advertisements were coming out, I was like, this is going to be awful and I hate it. <laughs> no, I 100% agree. I thought it was horrible. <laughs> okay. Agreed. It was, I wasn't, a, well, because they had, it was a commercial that aired on Noggin and they had where it was like, they were talking about the food as you eat it. And there was a really annoying song that went along with it. And my parents wouldn't let us watch it based off of seeing that commercial. Because the song was so annoying. That's beautiful. I'm glad we're in agreement on that. <laughs> I was going to mention my favorite show as a child. There's a lot of contenders for really, like, I've watched as much media as a kid as I have <laughs> as an adult just about. I really liked Ben 10. I really liked Cat Dog. There was a lot that I really liked. But my very, very favorite was probably Legends of the Hidden Temple. Or Legend of the Hidden Temple. I forget exactly what it was. It was also a game show. It's back now on the CW. But I don't know why. But there was just something so exhilarating as a kid. To see other kids my age run through obstacle courses to obtain mild presence like a scooter. Yeah. (laughs) It was beautiful. My favorite is probably i think it was chowder and you know i think chowder is when you think about it chowder was like proto gen z humor because it was like the abrupt out of nowhere humor where like things just i i watch uh, german 985 and he explained gen z humor really well i think in a stream where he was challenged to watch gen z humor and try like not to laugh at it (laughs) he says gen z humor is just so much random things happening at once that your brain cannot process any emotion except to laugh because what else do you do (laughs) besides laugh at it? Because no other emotion makes sense because it's not like it doesn't make you angry. It doesn't upset you. It doesn't really make you sad. So like, what are you going to do besides laugh at it? So I think Chowder was kind of like, pro. although Chowder did have some pretty good jokes in it that were well executed as well, but it did have, it would like had snippets of like proto Gen Z humor in it. And I think it helped develop my current humor because of that. Yeah, I love Chowder. Chowder was great. But I was going to say, have you, did you guys watch The Wiggles? Oh yeah. No, actually I didn't. My, fa- my entire family was like big on the wiggles for kid for art for the kids Mm -hmm. and i i always forget about the wiggles because the wiggles is the one that like i watched before i gained self-awareness at the age of four (laughs) um so i only have like snippets and fragments of it but i can remember the big red car song i can remember that one oh god wait maybe i can't I can remember, but, but, chugga, chugga, big red car, <laughs> da, 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 and we'll go far, or something like that. Is it Jordan. toot, toot, chugga, chugga, big red car? That sounds right. That sounds correct. Yeah, it's about a big red car. The Wiggles have this big red car, <gasps> and it's called the big red car. Yeah, the Wiggles was huge in our house. Actually, uh, <laughs> fun story, the mutual friend that we've talked about a couple different times on this, we grew up, uh, our families grew up really, really close from a very young age, and both of us were really into the Wiggles, and he owned a toy from the Wiggles. It was Captain Feather Swords, like Feather Sword, and the amount of times that the two of us would fight, like, all out, not as toddlers, obviously, it's not as dramatic as I'm remembering <laughs> it to be, but, like, I, my kid brain remembers it as like knockout drag out fights over this fucking feather sword <laughs> and like there would be there would be times where our parents would have to like pull us apart and be like no you have to share it you can't just like keep it you, you can't fight over this stupid sword <laughs> I never really watched the wiggles I watched like a couple episodes I don't know why I didn't really watch it it might just not have lined up with my schedule when I was watching stuff because the wiggles were just a boy band for little kids you can't change my mind they True. were that and the doodle bops 
Where's yeah. Jeff? Is he but sleeping outside? There's someone that Jordan and I know. There's a certain someone that made very Wiggles like content. You know Jeff from the Wiggles? No. No. <laughs> I can't even remember the guy's name, but he made the song that has stuck with me ever since I heard it when I was like 15. I'm driving in my, my car. car. <laughs> do, 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 do. Driving, driving in, in my, my car. You can't find that song on the internet anymore. I downloaded it off of Apple. I you, bought it. <laughs> you have to send it to me because when I look for it, when I Google the specific lyrics, nothing comes up. It's not on the internet anymore. He disappeared. I have NFT. NFT. Oh my gosh. <laughs> there was another song of his that we would sing all the time and I can't remember what it was. It, it was like the notes song or something. It, like, mm-hmm. it, it had something to do with music. Yeah, because... Uh, uh, beats. It was rhythm. That's what it was because Mutual Family Friend would sing it all the time. <laughs> ta, 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 was... ta, ta. That's what it was. <laughs> yep. It was very... But yeah, driving in my car, that was, that was a thing for a hot second when we were like not kids we were like tweens yeah like i don't even know why we were 15 and 14 and we found this very wiggles-esque guy and we were like this is amazing we (laughs) learned the goddamn (laughs) harmonies to that song like we would break out in it and it would be like it would be perfectly harmonized it was we were obsessed with that song (laughs) yeah i'm not sure what happened with us there but to be fair i was also around the same time that i went and auditioned for something by singing a kfc commercial so (laughs) I was kind of broken. (laughs) Hi, this is Jordan from Nat One Podcast. We hope you enjoyed the episode you just listened to, and we hope that you come back for more soon. If you'd like to keep up with the zany shenanigans of our lives and the different things that we do, you can find us on Twitter, TikTok, Spotify, YouTube, CastBox, and Anchor. We look forward to seeing you again soon. And hey, thanks.